Hi, and thank you for joining me on a special edition of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. Just one guy, Jim's away, but I have two friends and very special guests tonight. I have Mr. Rocky Holland of West Hartford Wine Club, and, well, I think we all know who this is. This is Mr. Chris Williams, town councilman, barrister, barrister of justice himself. Thank you for joining. I think this is Chris's Thanks, sixth appearance, yes. so I think uh, you are the Alec Baldwin of the show, though not without all the um, controversy that comes with the Alec Baldwin character. But thanks, guys, for joining me uh, tonight. This Thank is a you. special show. I sort of got this idea from Rocky a while back, and I've done it before, but it is a Cabernet Sauvignon blind tasting. And I'm sort of going to be the Monty Hall tonight. Uh, I don't have Jay Stewart or Carol Merrill with the doors at or those curtains, but we do have nicely wrapped up aluminum foil bottles of four different cabs. I have a California. I have a French, I have a Chilean, and I have a Spanish. And behind one of these silver linings might be a gem, or they all might be zonks. We're going to let all our palates decide. And I cannot remember which is which. So I'm going to be right there and with you, and we're going to have some fun. And uh, hopefully there won't be any zonks tonight. So, Rocky, thanks again for joining. I know this is your second appearance on the show. And uh, I want to do a little discussion about the West Harvard Wine Club and also what you've been involved in before we even get into the taste thing in regards to wine culture. What's the big thing going on right now? Uh, well, I've got the West Hartford Wine Club, uh, but I am currently studying to become a certified sommelier. I've yet to take intro, but uh, there's four levels, intro, uh, and then the certified, and then advanced and master. Uh, but I hope to take certified, so what I've been doing is a lot of blind tasting because that's one of the things that you have to do. In order to pass certified is you have to be able to uh, take a glass and tell what's in the wine by just, there's a five step process. You look at it, you smell it, you taste it. You got initial conclusion, final conclusion. So, so I, I think Rocky might have a little leg up on us today, but I can guarantee you Rocky, there is no hundred dollar bottle of Cabernet here. I, but who knows, there could be something that surprises all of it us. It would not surprise me if you guys got so, everyone right and I missed them all, <laughs> believe me. So our first one, which is labeled number one for our audience, and we'll do the unveiling at the end of the show, is obviously a Cabernet. And um, right off the bat, I mean, it's a nice dark, dark to medium dark color. Mm -hmm. I think it's a moderate bouquet. Hmm. Of course, I'll let you be the first one because uh, Rocky's really into it over there. So I'll let you, what do you think of that? And I'm also the lay person of the group. No, you're not the so lay person. You've had plenty of red wine. I don't have to jump and say where I... What no, not yet. No, okay. no you okay. don't. Okay. Um, I like it. It's a little uh, dry, I think. Um, it is dry. From my perspective, a little more dry than I typically like, but it is good. I like it. Uh, it's maybe a little bit of dark chocolate in there. Um, so I think it's good. I want to go A+. Plus. Are you going to go A+. Plus right I, I said I would not go oh, A+. Oh, okay. Plus. <laughs> just say, yeah. uh, so I would say, you know, B. 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 Okay. I would say B. Rocky? Solid B, yeah. Solid B. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's, 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 good. it's not it's... offensive. It's certainly, um, I mean, if somebody served this to me or I had a glass at a restaurant, I wouldn't be offended by it. It's not very complex. But it certainly is, is a very drinkable cab. In regards to the terroir of this one. I would be surprised if this is California because it's not, it doesn't have that berry in your face profile, but it could be. Yeah, and, that's, and Rocky, uh, that's, a, that's a good point. A lot of Californians do have a berry. There's, a, there's a, something that jumps out at me when I smell this, and I don't want to make a total fool out of myself on television, but uh, there's something that's known as a pyrazine, which is a, it's kind of like, a, almost like a bell pepper uh, aroma that typically comes from Chilean wines or from uh, Cabernet that has been picked early. Um, so I'm kind of leaning towards Chile with this one. If I were, to, if I were to wage a guess... But again, that can, that can come in pretty much any type of Cabernet if the grapes are picked early. It's That's a, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to probably say I might, go, I might go Spanish myself on that one. Why? It, I think the climate of Spanish grapes, I think they're usually a little bit on the colder <laughs> side, right, for Spain. Uh, I don't, like I said, I, that's just my personal guess here. Um, without going into complex details, which... Would and that me. chocolate note can be yes. negative yeah. with Spanish wines, yes. too. Spanish, yeah. I don't drink a lot of Spanish Cabernet, so this is definitely an area where um, I'll falter. But uh, it's good. It's solid. It's, you know, I would, 
I would drink it. Yeah, like I sure. said, it, it's not offensive. So, yeah. um, do I, I have a guess? Oh yeah, you have to give a. a, a I mean, it's just I, I can't I can't compete with Rocky's well, logic. I, just take I'm going with him. You're on this a, one. You're an attorney. I'm sorry. Fake it. I'm going, I'm going <laughs> I, with Rocky. I'm completely talking out of my rear. Oh man. I have so no we're, idea we what got, I'm talking about. We got about. two Chileans. Two Chileans, and one, one Spanish. Spanish. Okay. All right. So the next one, which nobody knows what this one is, similar in color. Actually, it's a little lighter right off the bat. And these are, this, this is a fun thing to do with, even if you're a, a novice wine drinker, is these blind tastings. Because I think uh, it gives you an idea of you're not guessing or you're not drinking with your eyes. You're drinking, you're, you're judging with your mouth. I've been very surprised to learn that um, by taking away the label and the pretenses of what you think you like, uh, I have found that a lot of these wines, regardless of price point, I've said, I like this better than I thought I did. Yeah. But I've gone into it saying I didn't like it. So That's true. That, that's a great point. I was just talking with my wife about this, how we imagined if you, you put up a $100 bottle of wine versus you know $12, $15, what percentage of time you would prefer the lower price point. And it's just kind of an interesting. It can be all over the place. Right, yeah, and really that's interesting. That's not just me. That's everybody that I've done this with. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's, me and Jim have discussed doing this kind of show for a number of years. I think we've been doing this show over seven years now. We've actually never done a blind taste on the show before. So I'm sorry you can't be here, but this is a really good lesson as to we're drinking with our palate and not our eyes. Because like I said, I don't remember what any of these are either. So. Interesting. Let's give this one a little twirl. Like I said, it's a lighter color right off the bat. What does that mean in terms of region when you see lighter? Does well, it mean anything? For a cab, if it's lighter, it just means the amount of time that the grapes are kept in, right? <sighs> I gotta tell you with cab, cab is so tough because there's so often something mixed in with it and if it's California, it only has to be 75% yeah. Cabernet and okay. that's the problem with trying to nail down California. There's some of the most tough ones to blind call because if you throw a little bit of Syrah, you throw a little bit of Zinfandel or some Petit Syrah in there, all of a sudden it's just inky, dark, It's funny, but you, it's a Cabernet. You mentioned the Zinfandel, I'm getting a little of that with mm -hmm. this, a little Zinfandel flavor and I'm also getting that berry. And I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards that being the California. Once again, that's just me, but mm. I think does, that's a solid guess. Yeah. It does have a heavier feel yeah. in the mouth than the first one. It's got a little bit more of a berry profile to it. I find, too, that when it comes to blind tasting, I more often talk myself out of the correct answer than I talk myself into the correct answer. So if I taste it and I'm going California, I would like to stick with that because I'm kind of thinking that there's certain... You said you have a, you, you have a French, right? Yes. Yep, okay. there's a French there, yeah. So French, you're really only a couple of regions. You've got Bordeaux uh, and you've got Languedoc. Uh, Lang will, this I could be a Languedoc French. I will say that the French is a Bordeaux. Okay. Oh, it is. is well, okay. then this is probably not the Bordeaux. But Rocky, it's funny you mentioned Languedoc because I spent some time in that region. I love and, Languedoc. Yeah, and the, the reds are a little lighter. Yeah. So it's, it's funny that you said that. Cause well, in, in the quality that you get for the for a $15 bottle of wine anywhere in France, you can't beat Languedoc. Cannot beat it. Okay. So, And I, I don't know if we ever discussed this last time on the show. When you're buying wine and you're overseas in Europe, there's no sulfites overseas, correct? Uh, I think that all, just about all wine has naturally occurring sulfites. They don't add sulfites to it, I believe. But um, so I know in America, to some degree, they, they put that in yeah, we, we add the sulfites. Um, but... Uh, there's a raging controversy about sulfites and whether or not people are actually the ones, the people that have the allergies uh, to the wines, if it's due to the sulfites or if it's due to other compounds. And they've recently found, I believe it was, I believe it was an Italian scientist found out that there is a, there's a chemical similar to latex that is found in wines that we didn't know about, and that mm. could be what's causing these reactions. That's but, very uh, interesting. That is interesting. I don't remember where yeah, I read more that, regulations against the wine because of latex poisoning. Way <laughs> smarter than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. Oh, it's good though. It's, it I, is. I, I, I'm going to rate that one pretty good too. I'm going to say a B on that one. I mean, I'm gonna, it's a little fruit forward for me, but uh, it's certainly drinkable. Yeah, I would go. I would go B minus on this one. B minus on that one. Yeah, because I preferred the first one. Actually, we never even talked about the acidity compared yeah. to the first two. This one's pretty low acidity. Yeah, and I think the first one had higher acidity because yeah. I sort of felt <clears throat> that one a little bit myself. When you're when you're tr when you're trying to figure out what it is in the step of t the palate. You've got the acidity, you've got the alcohol, and you've got the tannin. Uh, typically, with Cabernet, you've got high tannin. This one's not mouth-gripping high tannin, which is typical of a lot of California wines. They really 
they just they they beat those grapes into submission to where they get rid of that tannin. They throw some oak on it. Sometimes they throw oak chips on it, but um, the the tannin that you expect out of Cabernet is oftentimes not there, which kind of leads me towards California too with this one as well. I, I personally like tannin. Mm. Especially if it's supposed to be there, like like with Cabernet. But and uh, generally, I think in a cab you're getting a higher alcohol content. Generally, right between 12, 13.5. Typically. Typically. Yeah. Typically. Yeah. So everybody's glass is empty. So I mean, uh, so far there's been no zonks. No. Yeah. No, I didn't but, rate that. But where once. are you going? Are you are you uh, final answer? Oh yeah, this? I was California. The I final think. answer though. Is that my final answer? Yeah, I'm sticking with the okay. final answer. I'll go California. Yeah. California, too? Yeah. I, okay. I don't want to lead you guys down any roads, but I'll have to go California <laughs> with that one. All right, so just so we're keeping track, we have two people, Chilean, said the first one. Yeah. I'm going with the Spanish. We all are in agreement with the second one possibly being California. Yes. Okay, good. All right, so number three. <clears throat> oh, that's much darker much right darker off the bat. Up. Yeah. And that's another great thing, uh, to the audience about Thank doing you. these kind of tastings. Seeing the colors of the wine being so different, and we're all we're, we're drinking cabs. These are all cabs. And right. They're so noticeably different. This one this one's got kind of a plummy characteristic to it. Dark plum. That's a little on the flat side, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. It's um now that's got some more tannin in it. It's definitely drying your mouth it out. It does. It does at the end, yeah. That's very interesting. This to me, I would like with a steak. Mm -hmm. This is a drink. This is a food yeah. wine, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you'd be walking around with puckered lips the whole night if you were just drinking and not eating anything with this particular wine. It has a place on the table, but I think it's definitely a place that has food. Mm -hmm. Or yep. we have some this cheeses is, here. This is a food wine for oh, sure. Yeah. But th this is probably the most darkest red so far we've had mm -hmm. tonight. So that's a little uh, interesting to me also. And uh, even though I, I can't remember just based on what the color labels is what this is. Because of the dryness, I might go to French again. Might yeah. go French. Yeah. Well, the, the color too can be indicative. If this is a uh, Bordeaux, typically they can add a whole lot of things to it. They can add Merlot to it. Mm -hmm. They can add uh, Petit Verdot. They can add uh, uh, Cab Franc. Um, in some cases, they can even add Malbec, um, mm. which I think you know could make it a little bit darker. But it's definitely got. Some, when I taste Bordeaux, I usually taste a dusty quality. It doesn't have that jumping out at me. But I, I mean, if I had to guess whether this is from Bordeaux or what's what's left, we got Bordeaux Spain. and we've got Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, probably go France. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I could I'm see a very weak guess at France. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it's weak. I mean, yeah. I could see, just, just in terms of visualizing this, can you see a baguette? I can't see a baguette. A, with a chevro cheese or something, goat cheese or something, and then you have this. I mean, that to me, from a layperson perspective, I can see French here. Chris, you're really not a layperson. This is your sixth appearance on <laughs> the show. Uh, if I had a little star or medal to give you, I would. you would have it right on your lapel. How about a bottle of wine? A, a bottle of <laughs> okay. wine. So um, I, I'm just picturing you in Hollywood with the baguette and the cheese and walking yeah. around France and so forth. And very, very endearing. No, but I could, uh, this is where I'm coming from because I see the match, you know, so. I'm inclined to agree. Like I said, I, I, because it was so dry, I, I, I have to say French right <laughs> off the bat. So um, to me, it's, it's not my favorite so far of the three, but it might be different if I was having this wine with a food. Mm. Uh, that's equal to the characteristics of the wine. You going to grade it? I'm making that a C plus. C plus. Whoa. C plus. All right. How about you, Rocky? I would probably give this a B plus. Nice. I'm going to go back to B because I think it's for me on par with the first in terms of we're all experienced. And we're all in agreement that it's French. Yes. Yeah. So before we go to the fourth one, let's give our little palate a rest here. And okay. um, first, Chris, before I go back to Rocky, I want to sure. ask you if. Um, in regards to, I know you had a, a great summer probably this year also. Yes. A great summer year in Holly. And um, has there any, been any, any wine experiences that you have been able to engage in with you in Holly this summer? Did you guys do anything or did you go anywhere that wouldn't bother? Absolutely. We went to the Chamard Vineyard. Uh, I don't know the exact town, but I think it's right outside Clinton, uh, down near the shore in Connecticut. Yep. Phenomenal place. When you go, when you drive in there, you, you come along a dirt road and you're surrounded by vineyards and it comes to an old uh, house that has been converted into a restaurant. Just the best food you can imagine, 
and a really great experience with the wine. And the back side of the restaurant has a little, it's a bar, but it's just wine. It looks back upon vineyards, there's a nice pond, and it's just a little piece of heaven. It's really... It is. And I, I, there, oh, you've been there? I've been to Chouard, okay. and I think, I don't know, how, Rocky, how many, I know you're new sort of to Connecticut, right? You've uh, been here a while? I've been here uh, 10 years. 10 years. I don't know yeah. if you've been to many of the, the vineyards in Connecticut. I've probably been to maybe five of them, five or six. Visually, they're all beautiful. There's I mean, a lot of oh, beautiful they settings really there. Beautiful. But like I said, uh, Chamart, I can't remember what the ratio is for Connecticut grapes to imported grapes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I did like the wines there. Yeah, they have a mix. Uh, they have the Connecticut wines, which, you know, are, they're good, but they're not as... as uh, Cap Franks. Exactly. Yeah. But they're not, uh, you know, I don't think the, the most popular. They have a nice Malbec that they, the grapes come in and they make it there, but it's, I thought it was very good. I know it's a beautiful setting, and that's yeah. one thing I'll always say, you know, whether or not you, you're a wine snob or not a wine snob, Connecticut wines, there, there are some places for Connecticut wines on the table, mm -hmm. and uh, even if the ones that import the grapes and there's a good mix of more California grapes, which I think is where most of the grapes come from, um, it's still a great night out, it's a great day out. A lot of them have great places to eat now. In the past, that wasn't the case until they changed the laws recently, so now, you can get food at a lot of these vineyards, so um, good. That's How about great. you? How about you guys? Well, me? The summer. I mean, Newport? Well, yeah, I, 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 obviously, it's just the summer is usually always involving some sort of drinking, sailing, or activities going on in Newport. And, you know, I don't like talking about that too much because, you know, people get disgusted with me. Here about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rocky, what about you? I mean, what, what's your big thing this summer? I know. Rosés have been popular. We've done rosés. Yeah. Uh, what are, I, I definitely have gotten into rosé, and I never thought I would do that. But uh, the Whispering Angel, uh, we we have been uh, drinking a lot of that. But the Provencial, it's the it's the Grenache uh, Syrah Morvedra blend uh, coming from Provence, made into a rosé. I've really gotten into that one. I, that's about the only rosé that I can take. Um, I'm not knocking rosé. It's crazy popular right now. Rosés yes. are going nuts. Uh, I, I will say but, mostly it's French rosés too yeah. also that I like. Yeah. I've tried, the, there's one that's called Black Ink that I tried just recently. It's a little too fruit forward, it's a little mm -hmm. too sweet for me. So if you do like rosés or if you're getting into the market for rosés, I would try French first because it's such a unique, different drinking experience. Yeah. Yeah. And it's to me it's more enjoyable. But mm -hmm. I don't want to turn anybody off to any other styles of rosés. So um, just give them all a shot and see what tastes best to you. Mm. All right, so our palates have taken a little rest. Sure. So we come to number four. Now the, this color goes back almost to the first one. Not quite as dark as what we think the French one was. A little bit clearer. Wow. Now that's interesting. That's very good. I don't know where to place that one on the palate. That's a very unique flavor compared to the other three ones we've had. And I, I'm not even going to jump in yet. I'm going to let Rocky swirl that around for a bit and ponder on it. And then really I think Spain would be, Spain would be a, a, a pretty good guess for this. I could see this. Oh my goodness. I, I could see this being California, too. It doesn't really jump, you know, California wines tend to be more fruit forward. This has got more of an earthy feel to it. It sure does. So yeah, I really, think Spain, yeah. I think Spain would be a pretty solid guess for this. If this was the first one I was drinking, I would probably go with Spain for a guess. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is so unique. Uh, oh, by the way, I want to point out that when we do the unveiling in, in, a, in a few moments, I've only actually drank one of these in the past. Okay. All right. So I want to, you know, for a disclosure and so forth. So I've I've drank one of these before. The other three on the table I have not ever had. So judging on my opinion of this one, because it's such a, a different tasting cab compared to the other three, and that's, you know, I've, guessed, I've guessed the California, I'm gonna have to go with Spain. I think that's all that's left for me. Yeah. Um, but it, I'm not sure where to place this. If I, if I had a second guess, it would probably be chili for this one. Uh, it, it, that was my first one. It has, that, it has that aroma that I was talking mm -hmm. about with the first one, just not as potent. Yeah. But again, you know, Cabernet is one of those grapes that they're all trying to be Bordeaux and they all follow the same, um, a lot of them follow the same growing and, and vineyard methods that it's just, really, it can be really tough to tell where uh, Cabernet is from. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, I, I do, agree. Do you, and <clears throat> I agree with everything you just said. I was thinking Spanish or Chilean. 
and it reminds me a little bit of a Malbec. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that's what's making me yep. think a little bit about chili because this is my favorite of the night so far. That's why I love doing the show. I never would have guessed that. This is not my favorite of the night, okay. but that's very interesting. Yeah. But it's definitely got that earthy characteristic yeah. that you get from a Malbec. Right. So, so I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm chili trying not or to Spanish. It's, it's, it's hard. You know, it's really but, interesting. Uh, you know, that's another good point, Rocky, because oh. it is the only screw top here on the table tonight. And, uh, you know, as you know, there's a lot of wines that have screw tops. Yeah, it used to be only like Australia and a couple of other areas. Yep. But l anymore, you know, if we if you told me there was something from New Zealand or Australia, I would automatically say, okay, that's probably it. But anymore, so many places are going to the screw top. It just mm. makes sense. Interesting. You don't get uh, the cork taint uh, from the screw top. Uh, but traditionalists hate the screw top. So a lot of wines, you're probably not going to see a thousand dollar first growth Bordeaux with a screw top in our lifetimes. So it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, hey, Jim and I have actually talked about this before in the past and uh, what's the long-term storability with a screw top? I mean even if it's an expensive wine can you still store wine for a long period of time yeah. with a screw top? I mean it shouldn't make any difference. I think so yeah. So it's really more of a mm. social and yeah. opinionated type thing in regards to science or anything. There's just something about opening up a cork out of a bottle of wine. It it's, is. It's just an ethereal feel that you just... I agree yeah. with you. You know, you, you like that, but... Uh, All right, so I think it's getting close to we take our time and reveal these one at a time. Drum roll. So I think we're going to start with number one. Okay. I Am I the one that picked the uh, Chilean? Or what did I pick on that one? That was... Uh, did I go with Chilean on the first one? I don't recall. I'm kind of back and forth between we, one we and four Chile and Spain. We should have. I thought we'd be able to remember this. But I think, uh, well, let, why don't we do number two? Because we all, rem that was all We all said two California, was California. You're right. And that was French. Yeah. I think and we so all like, were You said Spanish. I got it. You said Spanish. I said Spanish. And there we go. There so, we and and so we said you, uh, Chilean. So if you're right there. The yeah. big uh, Monty Hall reveal here behind Silver Curtain number one is Crane Lake. Got that one. A very inexpensive California. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. Nice you can job. find that one anywhere in the in anywhere any actual It's Very store. drinkable. I mean, yeah. so many Spanish or Spanish, so many California Cabernets for low low price, drinkable everyday wines. Under eight dollars. Very similar to Two Buck Chuck <laughs> in regards to availability. Very interesting. But it's another example of why that is easy yeah. to drink, not overly crazy, and. Uh, um, there you go. Well, great right. job. Right. Great job, team. All right, so I think we're on number three now. Yeah, that was everyone said French, right? I Everybody did, said yeah. French. And the big reveal for number Bordeaux. three is. Or Bordeaux. Is the hey. Depth of Bordeaux. Oh, oh, that's great. That? Yeah. And two this, for two. It is. Two for two. And uh, it's another example of an inexpensive Bordeaux that's available. <sighs> you might have to look around for it a little bit. Uh, under $12, usually. And. Uh, we all seem to somewhat like it. I yeah. think I only gave it, did I give it one of my lower grades? A C plus. A C yeah. plus. Yeah. So what's left now are the two end caps. <laughs> so I think we had Chilean or Spanish. So you said Spain for this. I said Chris Spain and I for said that. Ch Chile, so. Yeah. So we'll here's, go number here's one. Here's to find out. All right. Here's, to find, here's for all here the money. Here we go. I don't look anything like Carol Merrill, but here we go. It's, Chugwell. It's Chilean. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know if you ever had the comment. Holy crap. Um, but, uh, I it's have not. But another it's relatively. Everything that I would expect out of Chilean. Inexpensive cabernet. cab. I think it's uh, the 14 or below price range. Wow. But um, very good. So I think we all know what this one is. Process of elimination. Yeah. So does the fact that there's a screw off top surprise you because it's Spanish? Or no? No, not really. No. Okay. But I could tell you a little bit about this one. This is a El Torito cab. Very inexpensive cab. You can find this most places in West Hartford. Some of the bigger stores, under $9. Really? Okay. Yeah. And uh, once again, another classic example of why drinking blind without getting predetermined opinions about things is so much fun. Really because fun. none of these wines are over $15. Most of them are under 10. So, very interesting. And I could drink any one of these wines. Yeah. There's, there's not one that I would say, oh, no. There isn't, that. and that's what's so fascinating about wine, because a lot of times so many of us drink, even myself sometimes, with our eyes instead of just using our palate. Yeah. So, it's also great because it's, it's, if you have people over, it's a great thing to talk about. It is a great thing you know, to talk about. During that, we got sort of the holidays coming up, right, yep. right around the corner, and, and you, know, you have people around, and you, 
do a taste test. But I will say, I, I know you gentlemen will be coming to another wine tasting party soon. There will be no, nothing covered. So you know, yeah. I, I have to put my best foot forward to these guys if they're coming over to my house. So there'll be a better quality of wine being tasted uh, at that particular party. But it's another, what's said, I would always recommend to anybody who watches the show to do the blind tasting because it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it's great. I think it it's just a lot of fun. Really fun. You know, when we, uh, we've had some events with the uh, wine club, are we short on time? I don't know. No, we're still good for a few minutes. Uh, we've had a few events at the wine club, and a couple of the times what we've done are blind tastings where everybody, we, we, we don't just go blind, but we have a list, you know, pick from these five. What do you think the varietal is? Where is it from? Everybody loves it. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, just, it's, it's just a fun, different thing to do with wine. And you're sitting there and you're going, oh, what, where have I smelled this before? Why didn't I pay attention to, you know, plum or chocolate or things well, that... Of course, I, I, I'll agree with that. And I think the great social experiment about drinking Thank wine you. that way is sometimes... And it doesn't matter who you are, you always think that if it's more expensive, you have to act like you enjoy it more. I've had wine with so many people that you know, 30 40 $50 bottles of wine, and they, they say, oh, yeah, it's really good, it's really good. And then I found out later they didn't really like it at all. Mm -hmm. So you never, ever drink wine like that. Drink it by how it tastes, and um, you'll enjoy it a lot more. So in our remaining few moments of the show... Um, Rocky, what's in store for the wintertime? Anything coming up for the West Hartford Wine Club? And what's the contact information if people are interested? Uh, the easiest thing to do, I know there's probably an address. Just go on Facebook and search for West Hartford Wine Club. Um, it is a closed group, so you have to be accepted into it. We prefer you to live in West Hartford, but, you know, surrounding areas are also okay. We've got uh, what my wife is referring to as the Halloween party yes. coming up. Yeah, It'll be a Halloween-themed wine party. She's already... Uh, bought several decorations for this because she is uh, crazy about Halloween, uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, aside from that, I guess that's pretty much about it. We try to do something maybe once every three or four months, um, so that'll be our... We haven't done one at our place for a while, so back in the rotation of that. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And I know we're all West Hartford uh, natives here, and I know... Uh, it's a great town to live in. It's going to be interesting times coming up, Chris. Sure. And uh, I know you and Holly are doing well, and uh, your children are doing good. We're doing great. You know, we're excited for the fall, the holidays. and Any uh, trips coming up uh, at all for uh, before the Christmas time? Nope. We're just uh, going to be trick-or-treating. We'll hit up your house. Oh, I expect that. <laughs> He's got more spiders on his house than anyone else in I always try probably to, Connecticut. Yes, I always try to up the spider count yes. every well, year. Well, you have this year. So uh, it's I great. appreciate that. So once again, I want to thank everybody for watching this very special edition of Two Guys. Well, just one guy in a lot of wine. Both Rocky Holland and Chris Williams, thank you so much for being here. Look forward to seeing you again. And until next time, keep all of us in your wine cellar.